Well, it's really looking like rain. We have thunderstorms scheduled to come in in about two hours. I'm sitting here thinking about Dishy, and I really feel good about this. You know why? Because I have an uninterruptible power supply. That means if I lose my house power, I'm still going to have power going to my Starlink system and any other sensitive electronics that I may have. So I'm going to take you inside, I'm going to show you what I have, and we're going to talk about why you may want to get yourself a uninterruptible power supply. So first off, let me say, if you stick around to the end of this video, we're going to do a test and I'll be able to show you how many minutes this UPS system is going to last with just the Starlink plugged in. Because that's my objective, to have only the Starlink running so I can continue to have internet while I have no power. So stick around for that. And while you're at it, go ahead and click the subscribe button and click the like button and leave me a small comment down below if you have a UPS that you recommend or if you're not sure you need one, go ahead and ask that question in the comment box below. Well, here's the battery backup from Cyber Power. I'm going to use this on my Starlink router. Uh, if you don't know what this is for, this is for electronics that you don't want to lose when your power goes out. You like to have them stay on for a little while longer until you have a chance to power them down, shut them down in an orderly manner. This goes for computers, laptops, uh, television sets, really anything that you want to uh, protect. They also have surge protection in them as well. This is a uh, 1500, it goes up to 900 watts. I'm not sure how long it's going to last, but that really depends on what load you have on it. If you haven't seen my video on losing the Starlink with bad weather, uh, you can lose your Starlink uh, signal, of course, with rain and sometimes snow, but mostly just rain. But if you have a thunderstorm, there's a possibility you could lose your electricity. And if you lose electricity completely, if it goes out, that's probably the best situation. But if you get a situation of where your electricity is going up and down or just flickering, that's what really damages electronics. Well, here it is out of the package. Again, it's by Cyber Power. I purchased this off of Amazon. For what I'm going to use it for, it's really an overkill. For my Starlink router, it probably takes maybe a watt to operate. And I could have got by with a smaller unit to give it just a few minutes to uh, keep it powered up until I have an opportunity to shut it down. But my thought is I'll get a bigger one and I'll be able to continue to run my Starlink for hopefully 30 minutes to an hour with no power. Give me a chance to check the weather using the internet on there. I have a laptop, of course, since battery backed up. Telephones can be connected to it as well. So I bought a bigger one here for that very reason. Let me get this one uh, all set up and we'll talk about some of the features. The reason I got this model specifically was three reasons. You can disable the alarm on this model. Right on the front panel it has a button. If you push it in and hold it three seconds, it's going to disable all alarms. And this is really good because if you start to lose your power and you go on the battery backup, every few minutes it's going to beep. It's going to alert you that you're on your battery backup. And then as you get closer to the end of your battery, the alarm is going to get more frequent. Now that can be kind of a nuisance, uh, so I really like the feature of being able to disable the alarms. Second reason was you can replace the batteries in this unit. This unit, as I mentioned earlier, is kind of big. It has two batteries in it. Both of them can be replaced. And that's because these batteries last between three and six years. Some of the units, especially the smaller units, are going to have batteries that cannot be replaced. You'd have to toss out 
the entire unit if the battery goes bad. And finally, I picked this unit because it was compatible with the Mac operating system. I have a MacBook Air and I wanted to use the feature to go in and monitor the power configuration and most of the units I saw did not support Mac. Well, when I got around to installing the software to do that, I found out that they are discontinuing, that Cyber Power is discontinuing support for Mac OS effective, I think, April 22nd. I said, this is March, I'm gonna download the software and get a jump start on that. I downloaded the software, but my computer would not load it. It said that Apple cannot verify the identity of the software and to contact the software manufacturer. So I just kind of gave up on it at that point. I don't think it's important. You can use this unit and get all of the benefits and features of it without ever using their software to monitor the power system. On the back side of this is where the capability really comes in. You've got two rows of electrical 110 volt outlets here. This side here is for surge, meaning that you can plug into this and whatever device you plugged in is going to be protected from electrical surges. Over here, it's surge and battery. It means if you plug in over here, you'll get the same surge protection, but also when your house current goes out or you lose power for your home, the battery will supply 110 volt electricity to these plugs over here. So you want to make sure that you don't overload these with a lot of devices that will run your battery down real quickly. It also has surge protection for coax. It has a coax in, a coax out. You might have that on your television. And it has a way to connect it to a network. You can also plug in a monitor. It has a serial port for a monitor here. And then the USB where you can plug it directly into your computer. It has a circuit breaker right here for protection. It's got an angled plug here, three prong plug. So as I was saying, before you place it in service, make sure you follow your instructions, plug it in, get the batteries fully charged. The next thing you'll want to do after the battery is charged is test it. Test it to make sure that it is actually going to supply power through the batteries if it loses the power from the wall outlet. There'll be instructions in your paperwork that comes with it, but the easiest way to do it is to have something plugged into one of these battery jacks here and then unplug this from the wall. That should tell you if your battery side is actually working. I've got it plugged in and we'll give it a try right now. Wanted to show you the display on the front. So we cut it on. And it shows you that there's 120 volts connected. The battery capacity is, looks like it's full, and the load capacity is zero. For the purpose of a quick test, I plugged the light in, this lamp. I'm going to cut the lamp on. And it really didn't affect the load at all. Now if I secure the uh, power going to this device, we'll see if the battery continues to operate the lamp. It sounded an alarm. It has shifted to the batteries. I heard a very slight little beep in there. It's showing 463 minutes on this particular load right here. 
So when the power does go out, you'll be able to monitor your power capacity. You'll see the status of the battery, and with whatever load you have plugged into the battery, it's going to display the number of minutes. And you see it's still beeping, appears to beep about every 30 seconds or so. I think we can eliminate that by pressing this right here. And we'll see if it does beep again. There's absolutely no noise coming from it. I don't hear a fan. I don't hear any noise at all. And that really may have to do with the load. If we had a bigger load on it, it may uh, have a fan noise. I'm going to turn the power back on. Input, 120 volts. So I think our test went well. I'm going to leave it plugged in for a few hours and make sure the batteries are fully charged before I put it in service. After I get the Starlink plugged in, I'll bring you back and we'll take a look at that. This, as I mentioned, can be used on any electronics, but I do have a uh, following of Starlink users and I wanted to address this to them in particular to show how they can help to maybe prevent any electrical damage to their Starlink unit. We know that we had to wait a long time to get it and we don't want to have to wait for another one if we have issues. So I'll bring you back after I do the complete setup. Let's do the test to see how long the unit will support power for the Starlink router only. The router is sitting on the table here and I have the UPS right here on the floor beside it. And I think we've got the display in focus there. What I'll do is I'll just unplug the unit. That will force it to go to battery backup. Get the display on first. It shows 121 volts. Power input is normal. Battery's fully charged. At this point, I'm going to unplug it to simulate a power outage. And with Dishy plugged in, it's saying somewhere between 186 and 241 minutes. I'm not sure why it's fluctuating between the two values. Maybe it needs to stabilize a few minutes and figure out exactly what the load is. Even at uh, 297 minutes, that's several hours, almost four hours. And you hear the beeping noise there? Well, I could disable that if you didn't want to listen to that. And again, that's a good feature I like about this unit here. So for your Starlink only, you've got several hours of support with this unit here. I'm going to plug it back in as if the power has just been restored. It's gone back to input power is normal. I'm really happy with that.